Hello there parents and welcome into this February 2023 with a focus on the full moon in Leo astrology forecast. My name is Chrissy Whistler. I am an intuitive and astrologer and I'm also the parent of two magical multi-dimensional kids. Now, if you uh, would like support on your parenting journey, if you are breaking and trailblazing new directions that you've never done before and no one else around you has, and you're stuck or feeling alone, do please reach out. I offer consulting calls as well as um, astrology birth chart readings, these chart your stars, where we look at the time of your child's birth to see what is the evolutionary direction of their soul at this time, how might they best um, be in this world with their sensitivities or their way of learning. We can look into all that and so much more. And you will find information to that at my website at chrissywhistler.com. And please like this video, subscribe to this channel. That really does help me to connect with more parents like you who are really wanting to understand uh, your children at this much deeper level and to support them on their journey. I appreciate you all so much for being here. So thank you. And thank you for saying yes to who your kids are and understanding them in this deeper, uh, even more intuitive way, especially when we start to look at the astrology. So speaking of astrology, let's get into that. Now, the um, this video here, I am taking a look at this from the lens of being a parent. If you would like at this from more this higher perspective of being an adult in our world at this time with everything that's going on, um, go look at the other video that I did that focuses on that. Um, but this one here is for you as parents. A revolutionary rebellious energy is pretty much the theme right now. <laughs> and that's gonna continue to be the theme for a while. So you're going to hear me talking about it and talking about it more and more again. So just be aware of that is this, this reoccurring theme with the bigger astrology and transits. This is a real time of, um, of death, of what is not working and outdated, just burning to the ground, okay? This, the phoenix rising from the ashes. So it's this death and rebirth process that we are in and our whole collective is in. And that includes our children and their experiences. So I'm going to see if I can help bring that into that perspective for you and what their experiences might be. So what are the current energies right now? Well... <laughs> Um, I would say these past, I'm filming this on January 31st, and these past three days, um, Eric has just been a ball of electricity. It's like nothing is helping him to calm his energy or dispel the energy. He has very sensitive antennas, like he's, he's totally picking up electrical currents of this world and oop, he's feeling it, and he he's, really struggles to have that energy move through him. So I've been noticing that is heightened right now and it definitely makes sense as we are in this particular moment with the astrology. Um, the Aquarius full moon with Uranus turning direct, that was the 21st of January and the 22nd. And now we're moving into this Leo full moon um, on the 5th and Uranus is still very much highlighted. So. I'm not surprised to see him reacting in this way. And Kate has been very emotional. <laughs> very, very emotional. So um, what is what has this time been like for you as a parent? What are you seeing within yourself? And what are you seeing coming up in your kids? You let me know in the comments below. So this period of time... Um, really especially being highlighted fall of 2022 and already into this year. 
I'm not going to go super deep into the astrology with you guys. I'm going to try and keep it a little bit higher. Um, but we do have um, Venus really playing in strong, especially with Pluto. I did mention that she was conjunct Pluto at the start of 2023. So there's so much of this really deep transformation that's playing out within our relationships. And Venus is going to continue, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to show you. I'm going to weave that in for you. But just know that right now is this really big time to look at the people around us and what is being reflected back to us from them. This mirror that they are holding up for us to see and see ourselves within that mirror. In fact, I am filming this on um, in the Galactic Mind calendar. It's a double white mirror day. And white mirror is just that. It's, um, it's a hall of mirrors. And each person around you is holding up a mirror that's reflecting your own conscious back to you. And who does that better than our children? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, you know, for me, as I'm describing with Eric, so much of my, my experience is not just helping him to dispel his energy and move it, um, or Kate having very emotional moments. It's what is it that it's coming up from and within me about my kids? How are they reacting? How is it triggering something within me? or within my own childhood, you know, when I was that age. So it's like deep dive big time into this mirrored reflection because there's something in that that needs to be seen and really reintegrated. And you can also this, of course, see this playing out in the reverse where you are holding a mirror up for your children and they might be, they will be reacting in some way. And um, it's not necessarily going to be in that gracious kind of way. You know, like Kate's at that stage where I kind of remind her, like, oh, you haven't had a shower in this many days. It's like immediately her hands are on her ears. She's like, I don't want to hear it. Um, but she's 10. So, of course, she's going to be reacting in that way. And am I going to be that 10-year-old who's responding to her 10-year-old self you know, and start yelling back at her, well, you better listen to me because I'm your mother and, or whatever, right? Like, I could be going into my own 10-year-old self reacting from her. Or can I meet that energy from this adult that I'm supposed to be, this more healed, aligned adult who's gone into the unconscious? Um, quite a bit of herself, right? So our children, <laughs> and I'm not kidding, it's like this 24 hour seven, um, they are holding a mirror up for us. In this particular period of time, it's going to be extra highlighted. There is this reoccurring theme between having our own individuality, our own desires, our own autonomy, freedom, and how we are in relationship to the other. So it's learning to balance that. And oh, our kids are getting us, giving us a front row seat in how to do that. So um, what's coming in for me to share as well is that this is a practice. Guess what, parents? The fact that you are parents and you're trying to be conscious parents, that is a spiritual practice. That is, um, I remember even this um, podcast that Eckhart Tolle did with Oprah, and there was this woman calling in about her three-year-old daughter, and I think Eckhart was even like, oh yeah, being a parent is, is so much better than like meditation. Like this is like next level. This is so higher and so much more intense because it's this constant non-stop opportunity to be, um, to be in practice. Practice, not perfect. I just want to be really clear with that. Um, and it's even when we're not perfect and we get it wrong, 
it is this opportunity to review and reflect and be like, whoa, that was kind of shitty. That really didn't feel good within me. What is it that I can do better next time? Or what is it within me that I actually need to look at and own my part in what happened? You know, as I said, um, there are times when I do react to my 10-year-old daughter from my own 10-year-old daughter who's got parts that are not healed yet. So there's this opportunity to do just that. Now, on February 3rd, we are starting this new cycle in the Galactic Mind Calendar. So take that time to review the previous nine months. Um, so May 2022. Where were you and your children at that time? What are you completing together on your journey? What has been coming up for you, coming up to the surface? Okay, again, this continuous theme of what's coming up for review, um, especially this past January, could have been a very intense review time, review process. Um, it's not just about this reacting and being triggered. This is actually about seeing what our unconscious is bringing to our attention. So be sure to go into the pain and into the discomfort, whatever it is, so you can heal it. Um, this is not to say bypass anything this you're really um all of us are being asked to really acknowledge these experiences you know i can go and look in myself in that 10 year old girl who kind of had to be perfect um because if she wasn't you know she got yelled at and as a sensitive person anger was incredibly difficult for me to hold and to have directed at me of course, I didn't know that when I was 10. I just knew what I had to do to survive and it was to be perfect. So it's, it's really, again, going in and acknowledging where even my reaction to my daughter is coming from. What those parts are speaking to me and what is it that I can do as this grown adult, as a mother to mother my own inner child, my own inner 10 year old. So see how that might be showing up for you at this time and witness and acknowledge what your feelings and experiences are, as well as what the experiences of your children are at this time. There's so much magic and power that can happen when we give witness and acknowledgement, especially to those areas that are pretty deep and dark and uncomfortable. Our world doesn't exactly make a lot of space for that, does it? This is also a period of really big dreaming, big visions, magic visions, okay? And if you forgot how to do this, again, look to your children and see if they can help you. See if they can even help you get back into the play of what it means to dream. You know, you might have some dream PTSD going on from, you know, from living in this crazy world where it's constantly you need to work and work and work. You need to bring in money to survive. And how many of us, including our parents, might have had to just burn our dreams because it wasn't possible. It was hard enough just to live, let alone dream. So if that's you and you're needing help with that, ask your, ch ask your children to show you the way to that. Um, as well, um, this is a time that's gonna be very uh, restless, very charged. This intense building of energy um, these tensions and pressures um, like underground before like an earthquake or a volcano eruption happens and highly sensitive children, especially children with these big antennas, as I mentioned with Eric at the beginning, they can really be pecking up on this. This is a very electrical time and so their central nervous systems can be running on high. So try to be very mindful and supportive for your children. 
It could be, you know, going in the shower, having a salt bath, getting outside, running, moving their bodies, dispel that extra energy, that extra electricity that could really, really help them. And this is also a time where trauma and disassociation is being very highlighted, especially from these experiences of the past. Um, you might have this trauma coming up from your own childhood for this review, this reflection. It could also be around like early education or your experiences with your parents. And then our children could be reflecting that back to us. Or that could be their actual experiences. You know, maybe they're, they're really having um, this trauma coming to the surface around um, bullies or school teachers not being supported or seen. So and I'm going to keep going in a little bit and bringing in some of the Kuiper Belt objects with this. But there is this real opportunity to heal any of that that's coming to the surface at this time. There is a building tension right now around relationships, all things that are associated with Venus. What we love, what we value, listening, um, balance, especially when it comes with others. And then there's this tension with Mars, and Mars wants um, individuality freedom, desires, sexuality, open roads, autonomy. So as you can see, there can be real like pulling between those two polarities at this time. And can we find this new way to do this, to have a balance between what the self wants and what the others or partners or parents <laughs> might want. So don't be surprised if you're seeing this playing out between you and your children or that they're reflecting this energy back to you or having it um, taking place in their own lives. Again, with friends, coaches, teachers, you know, um, like team sport or, you know, a team project. They want to go and do this thing over here and have it go in this direction. And your child is like, no, I want to go do my thing over here. I don't want to go do that activity. I want to go read this really good book. So that can very much be playing out. Um, it is a very transformational time this breaking free from these old societal expectations and obligations that would be Pluto in the 29th degree of Capricorn, um, especially around February 11th to March 23rd, very strongly highlighted in our lives and then in the world as well. And we can also see this playing out with um, gender roles and gender stigmas, okay? male, female issues are really coming to the surface. So it's important to spend whatever time that you need um, to get your own self clear and centered as a parent to come into your own alignment so then you can then model that for your children or support them in what's coming up in their life to hold that space and that container for them to express themselves, to move that even rebellious energy. Um, you know, for me, I just had this really big, deep dive coming through around money and dreams. You know, I was modeled and taught by my mother to really go and shoulder all the burden, all the weight, and then never actually speak up about my frustrations with that. Um, the, the women in my line are incredibly strong, incredibly resilient of what they can do. Um, but what was not modeled to me was actually speaking and saying, I actually need help. Can you go do this for me? Um, you know, it's that like, don't rock the boat kind of energy 
so but resilience strength I've totally got that but speaking my truth and how I feel there's been a lot to unpack um, for me um, and again that was conditioned and modeled to me by my mother and my grandmother this is not about placing blame, you know, our parents and grandparents and ancestors, they did the very best they could with what they had. And yet, here we have this deeper opportunity to really heal. And so that's where I kind of found myself is this, um, can I shift from constantly blaming myself when I'm not perfect? Okay, I see that weaving to earlier on in the video. I'm always needing to be perfect so I wouldn't get in trouble. And instead of that, can I actually move into self-love and self-forgiveness for those times when I did make mistakes and I wasn't perfect? And for me, it was like, wow, seeing the weaving and how much was coming through from my mother and my grandmother and my father okay because it's not all on my mom <laughs> it it really reflected itself to me in my life and it's like oh I see these pieces that are really coming together and again this modeling from my parents and now that I know this and understand this better I can be the one to break that cycle to trailblaze for my children into this whole new direction um, I've never been there before my ancestry and lineage hasn't been there before and yet I'm gonna go and do it anyway so if you are someone who's really doing this deep healing work don't discount it because it will truly transform um, this trajectory and this journey for your children but also for all the children and parents who even came before you so you're healing generations forward and generations behind when you go into this unconscious and you do this this deep shadow work and as i was speaking around this super self-reliant um resilient line that um, my my mothers have within my line my ancestry and this is actually a time where you know whoever is in that role in the home this is actually the time to take care of ourselves even just like sitting with that for a moment to nurture yourself to take care of yourself before you go and take care of everyone else yep that is a big theme um, it's on the 3rd of February so look at that we have another t February 3rd coming in with this you know galactic uh, cycle that's beginning this new spin so parents are you actually nurturing yourself at this time or are you always sacrificing yourself for others, for your children, for your partner, for your parents? There is this balance between caring and nurturing for yourself, even as those people in your life might be turning and asking you for help or you for your attention. We are really learning to say a healthy no or a no with love um, and that includes to our children as much as we can of course and this is bringing us to our full moon on February 5th this is going to be in Leo at 20 um, I'm sorry at 16 degrees and at 1028 a.m. Pacific Standard Time so see what house that the 16 degrees of Leo falls in your chart or your children's or if there's any planets there as well. If you need help with that and you want to know what these energies specifically mean for you or your children, again, please reach out um, for a chart your stars a birth chart reading and we can find out what is up for you. 
Um, but for the collective, all right, we actually have the sun is square to both the north and south node of the moon, as well as square to Uranus. So what that means is we can really be going through this very transformational time, this death and rebirth process. This is not easy energy, uh, challenging, heightened anxiety, especially if you or your children are sensitive to the collective and what the collective is going through. And again, I do a deeper dive into that in my other video, so refer there if you want to know more about that. Um, but this is a collective death process. Everything that is old or outdated is, is crumbling, being cracked open, broken open. So what can you expect with your children right now? That's tricky to say exactly because it depends on your children. It's going to depend on your life circumstance. If they are incredibly sensitive, you know, refer back to what I was saying earlier with going outside in nature and moving the body. Uh, water, 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 water can be very helpful as well. Uh, and also just holding space for whatever it is that they are feeling. Um, your children can be very reactive to you as well at this time, okay? So what can you do more as a parent? Really stay in this heart vibration. Stay in love. Focus on what you love and what you desire, what you value. And again, if your children are really going through that and picking up on this energy, the same thing goes for them. Help them to focus on what they love and what they desire. So it's moving away from fear, moving away from the anxiety, and really going into creativity, which is so much what this Leo full moon is all about. Um, and it also can be very charged creative energy, explosive even. So there's going to be this balance between being center stage and having our creative self-expressions and also community and the needs of the other, and letting other people go and take center stage. So that's how a balanced Leo is playing out. So see how you can support your children um, with anything that's coming up for them. Uh, maybe it actually is about being center stage in the play, and they can be really frustrated that um, they didn't get the lead role, for example. You know, and how can you help them line back up to, you no, know, we all have our moment to be in the sunlight, um, to be that the light shining on us. And really have them and yourself go vision at this time. Go play dream. Like if you had as much money as you wanted and you didn't have to worry about that, like what do they want to do? What do you want to do? Um, places you want to visit. Do they want to go skydiving or scuba diving or whatever kind of diving? Um, but use that. Use that childlike joy and wonder to help move through anything that's coming to the, ex in the surface, um, especially trauma. Okay, trauma healing, I mentioned, um, is very supportive right now. So, Give yourself um, time and your children any time and space to heal. Okay, this is, this is that series energy as well. This is about nurturing ourselves too. And this truth that we can't actually give to others when our own glass is totally empty. We need to fill ourselves back up as parents. There is a strong feminine energy that's coming in to hold the space and allow whatever is needed for this healing of this trauma to occur. And be mindful that full moons, they illuminate things. They can be a culmination or completion, but they can also shine lights. So what 
trauma might be a light shown on at this full moon. This can be where we as children might not have been allowed to take center stage, to go to the beat of our own drum, to be unique and different, to have and express our creative voices and expressions. So those could be some of the themes for your inner child that's coming up. And you might see that as well playing out with your children. Cosmic and universal law is also very highlighted at this full moon. And your children could be really picking up on this. They can be noticing and feeling that our man-made laws, um, this constantly being told what to do every day, every hour, you know, like, you need to do what I said because I'm your parent. Like that kind of thing, that may not be holding a lot of water with your kids right now or especially your teenagers. It's this energy of don't run into the street because a car might hit you. And I mean, of course, like toddlers and stuff, they're learning that. But it's like our older kids can be like, yes, that is a good rule to have. Don't go running into the street without looking. Um, but they can be turning around and just being like, yeah, that other rule, why can't I jump on my own bed? Like, why not? I don't care if it breaks. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, they can be really picking up on some of our more superficial rules and laws as parents. Um, or as well, like with their school or um, sports. Um, that kind of organized adult authority. Um, not allowing almost for diplomacy and their wants and needs to come through so they can be really feeling that and digging their heels in and resisting to that. There is a lot of revolutionary energy in the air right now, um, you know, protesting, um, rebellious. Your children might be really picking out and pointing out where uh, this universal and natural law has been distorted in their lives or their lived experiences. Um, again, like I don't want to go do this sport for class. I actually want to read a good book. Why can't I finish this good book? Why do I have to go and do what you said just because somebody wrote it on my schedule and said this is the time that it's happening? And they're like, I didn't pick that time. Like who cares about time? Time itself is this man-made um, construct as opposed to Sun rises and we get up in the day, sun sets, we go to bed. So you just see the difference between these laws and rules that our children can be really tuning into, and especially your older preteens and teenagers. A lot of desires, independence, and self autonomy is at play, and this is going to continue to increase. There's going to be this divine discontent around these old societal expectations and obligations that we're really grinding through right now um, through this rest of the year and into 2024. Um, at the end of 2024, Pluto will be staying in Aquarius. But right now, Pluto is going back and forth, um, dipping into Aquarius at the uh, end of March going to be there for six weeks and then coming back. So we're really going through all these expectations and obligations. And that includes, you know, us as parents and um, this top-down authority that we have with our children that is, is going to be coming to the surface and playing out. But how that looks will be different for each of us and our journey as parents and the parents around us too. This is very much a time of healing around the body, around sexuality, our desires and freedoms, this open road, need for exploration, to explore even our instincts. Um, it can be healthy, uh, health and vitality can be up, or we have a lot of it, or it can be the reverse. 
where we don't have good health or low vitality, we're more exhausted. So just kind of know that this can be some of the themes that you might see in your children or yourself playing out from now and really getting into March. And that will be depending on the need for the healing experience of themselves or yourself. And also don't be surprised if your children's desires or the direction they're going in um, this January has changed. That's going to be a lot due to Mars retrograde. Mars went direct on January 12th. So there can be this settling in for them um, and this need to go explore this whole new direction. And you might be like, wow, my children really love doing this thing. And all of a sudden they're like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to go over here and do this thing. So if you're noticing that they're, they're totally um, moving with this flow of this energy right now, uh, children are really good at picking up on this. So instead of you resisting that new direction, how can you support them and help them flow in that new way? This is a time of deep feeling, especially around our desires our heart, this higher mind, and that is leading us into the future. But it's not just our future as adults. We really, really need to start shifting and opening our perspective in this world that actually includes our children and how our world is run with their unique needs and their unique desires and wants. You know, for example, you know, here in the United States, um, they have developed this Common Core program uh, in standard for public schools. And I do believe many private schools follow this. I don't fully tune into what's happening in the school world because that's not the world that I'm a part of. Um, but I do know when it was really coming through it was like whoever created this program didn't actually take into account what a child's brain development could actually do. And so it's like this trickle down effect and then they're asking these children to be able to do these things and a child's brain actually hasn't even developed in a way that can handle that. So instead of talking to those who are experts of early childhood education and development, you had people up here at the top making decisions that weren't actually in alignment with the child's um, development and what they actually could do. And I don't know how much that has shifted um, since this was introduced, but I'm using this more as this example and story of how ridiculous that is that we're putting these expectations of our children that aren't actually in aligned with what our children need at the age of six or seven. Like, no, their job is actually to play. They go and they learn through play and to be these social creatures. Um, and yet there's this system and structure in place that's totally out of alignment, again, with this universal natural law. So there's a lot of this that's going to be really playing out over this time period. So be reflective and mindful and be aware of how that could be coming up for you and just kind of be like, oh, okay, I see how this is playing out right now. I see what's happening deeper under the surface that my children are expressing to me or their needs. Um, their wants, their desires. And so how can you meet that in a whole new and different way as opposed to what's been done in the past? So our children are really asking of us at this time, is can we include them in this new world that we're creating? Can we actually include their wants and their unique selves into this new earth? And can we as adults and as parents actually make space for them at this creation table? And I don't really think our children are going to give us a, a lot of opportunity to say no. Because that is the astrology. 
that is Pluto going into Aquarius. Um, we're really breaking in something new and our children are going to be amazing, beautiful guides of what that future is and the possibilities that can be. So I do hope this was helpful. Please, again, let me know in the comments below what you are going through. And if you are ready to trailblaze and go in this whole new direction and you need support, again, I am here for you. Or if you would like um, a birth chart reading for your children to see how you can support them, their way of learning, their sensitivities, I am here for you as well. Just go to my website, christywhistler.com. And please like this video, subscribe to this channel. That really helps me so much to reach and connect with more parents like you. Thank you, parents, so much for being here. And thank you for saying yes to the child or children that you have and their unique selves. I appreciate you so much. So thank you, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.